Okay, hello. Welcome to Women Who Code. Should I be introducing to all the people who are coming? I don't know. Let's just get started. <laughs> all right. So welcome to the interview uh, tech prep series. Um, <clears throat> so first, if you're not aware of technical interviews, um, they are basically, they're part of the the process to get hired into a software engineering role. Um, and they're basically designed to get a sense of how you problem solve. So the formats do vary. Um, they can be take home assessments like hacker ranks or I think um, the code signal, you know, just take home online assessments. Um, they can be live coding assessments. So either um, like, you know, like I think Carrot does one where you're, you're working with the, the team member and it's sort of like peer programming. Um, or if you have the fortune uh, to, you know, interview in person uh, or pre-COVID, <laughs> they're often whiteboard interviews as well, where you're actually designing the algorithm on a whiteboard. <clears throat> now, the focus of these um, technical interviews are twofold. First, can you solve the problem, right? Um, but also, how efficient can you solve these problems? And that is where um, Big O comes into play. Now, we are not going to go over Big O just because we went over it last time, but we do have in the meetup event links to our last lecture that went over Big O in depth. So how will the series help? Well, it is a series of events that helps you uh, learn the material as well as practice it. Oh, that's what it says here. So learn and practice. Um, and also get confident in your algorithm skills. So definitely practicing and working with other people and um, getting this experience helps you gain confidence. Um, we alternate between lectures and practice sessions, and it helps you network with other fellow developers. Like I feel like I know so so many of you now because of you know seeing your faces regularly, um, and that is pretty sweet. Okay. <clears throat> Part one versus part two. So part one covered a crap ton of stuff. Um, <laughs> we went over the algorithm design template, big O, strings, one to arrays, and the two pointer technique or the sliding window. Um, and as I said, there is a link to the last uh, lecture where you can get a refresher. Um, today, we're going to build on what we learned last time. Um, and we're gonna cover 2D arrays or specifically breadth first search, BFS or depth first search, DFS. But before we do that, I want to see what you remember. And, you know, I'm seeing a lot of new faces, which means you weren't at the last one. And you know what? We're just going to roll with it. <laughs> so do the best you can. All right. Hi, Rec Mint. Do you, any of you know what this stands for? Drop it in the chat. Do you know what the P stands for in Pi Rec Mint? First of all, do you know what Pi Rec Mint is? Like, are you looking at me like, what the heck is that? And if you do know, please drop in the chat. Uh, silence, silence. All right, thank you, Maria. No idea. <laughs> That's totally fine. I'm gonna wait for like three more seconds. Two, one. All right, at least I know what we're working with. <laughs> oh wait, there is another one. Repeat, no. Okay, I will show you. So PyRecMit is actually the algorithm design template that we use to, um, oh, yes, there we go. Um, yeah, to, thank you, Bay, to design the algorithm. So you never want to just start coding, right? Because worst case scenario, you actually have the, the problem wrong and you didn't get a chance to catch your errors as you were designing. Uh, best case scenario, um, you don't really have a chance to well, best case of the worst case scenario, you don't really have a chance to speak with your interviewers to um, get a sense of, so they can get a sense of how you think and how you understand um, problems. So problem, so in Pyrec Mit, so P is problem. So first you wanna restate the goal, like what is this, this problem asking? Input, I. Um, what are you going to receive? Are you receiving strings? Are you getting an array? In this, in this case, you're probably going to get arrays because that's what we're focusing on. Uh, what should your, re your function return? Is it a number? Is it true, false, et cetera? Examples and edges. Um, your interviewer or the take-home assessment will always or typically provide examples, but you want to 
build your own examples too. Uh, both the example, like an example input and expected output. And then and later where you see tests, you wanna test those as well to see if your algorithm works. Constraints, are there time constraints? Are there space constraints? Maintenance, what pieces of data do you need to keep track of as you're going through your algorithm? Uh, ideas, you wanna start off with your first idea, which is your um, naive brute force idea. Um, it's going to be the most inefficient idea that you have, which is fine, uh, because at the end of the day, it's better to have something than nothing. But if you can, if you, and you, if you have the time, try to ask yourself, okay, can I do this better? Like this is in ON squared. Can I, make, can I figure out a way to do this in ON time? Um, that's what you need to know or do. All right. <laughs> What are some examples of great run times? Go ahead and drop them in the chat. Like what is a what is a an awesome run time? Oh log n constant. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are both amazing run times. If you can do something in constant time, good for you. Um all right, what are some examples of absolutely terrible run times? Like ugh, ugh. That's terrible. Yes, exponential. There's some other ones too, but that is a that is a good one. Yeah, oh, and factorial. Like if you're gonna, like I don't even know any any algorithm that does. Oh no, I do. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any any algorithm that does oh, and factorial. But if you find that, like, you know, just stop <laughs> and start back from the beginning. All right, let's keep going. Um, here's a chart in case you weren't sure. Here's a chart that basically maps out various um, growth orders. I actually realize I'm running out of batteries. Here we go, quick fix, bam. Okay, so as you can see on the bottom, log n and constant or logarithmic and constant, very great. Linear, hey, that's pretty fine. O n log n, eh, not, not the best. Um, o n squared, okay, so it says red for O n squared. Sometimes you have to do O n squared, all right? Like that's just how it is. Um, and in fact, with with grid problems, you're a lot of times you're iterating through every one and it's gonna be O n squared or O m n. And like, that's just how it is. But any more than that, ugh, don't do it. Stop what you're doing and figure out a better a better algorithm. Okay, so I feel like for the sake of time, I'm actually gonna skip this part. Um, we are going to post the slides, but if you'd like to test your your big O knowledge, please uh, go home and I guess you're at home. We're all at home, uh, but go ahead and, and test this out on your own. Okay. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Well, now you have answers. All right. Two dimensional arrays. <clears throat> so two D arrays are super common in tech interviews. Um, they're also called graph problems or matrix problems or grid problems. Um, and I honestly, I use them interchangeably. Um, now, how do you know a graph problem is a graph problem? If you have nodes that have a relationship to one another, that is that is a graph problem. And that's something that you need to remember because it's not always going to look like a graph problem. Like sometimes you're going to get a word problem and you're going to have to parse out and say like, oh, this is actually a graph problem because it's in relation to one another. Um, and ju just keep that in mind. If you see nodes in relationship to one another, just think, oh, this is a graph problem. Like what is in my toolbox of strategies for that will help me attack this problem? And we are going to talk about a couple today. A couple strategies is what I meant. Um, okay, so these are what 2D arrays look like. Essentially 2D arrays are arrays of arrays. Um, so if you look at the sum grid array here, um, this is an array of arrays, right? So the rows are going to be the inner arrays and the, the columns are going to be the values within the array. Oh, I kept my typo, I'm sorry. Um, so like if you look at the first array within some grid, 5, 10, 4, 6, that is a row, but also 5, 10, 4, 6, those represent the tops of the columns. Um, this is actually not a four by five matrix, right? One, wait, width by height, right? Four by, no, it is a four by five matrix. Am I right? Am I wrong? <laughs> five, 
five by four or four by five? It's five by four. Is it five by four? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so this is a typo. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is a five by four matrix. And how do you know? It says it right here because the number of rows, <laughs> the number of rows are going to be the length of the, the outer array. And the number of columns is going to be the number of values within that first array. So it's five by four because it's five rows by four columns. Um, and on the next slide, it tells you why, because to get the value within the or within your grid, you first start with the row <laughs> and then you get the column. So it goes row by column. Um, just always think row call, row call. Like I think like, okay, roll call, you know, it kind of sounds like roll call. And that's how I remember the row comes first, the column comes next, um, except that time I just blew it then. But anyway, um, these are some cheat codes that you should know. Um, so I'm giving you these and it's important for you to remember, but also it's important for you to practice so that it comes naturally. Um, the last thing you wanna do is do a graph problem and totally forget where you are <laughs> in the grid, which from experience is super sucky and super messy. Um, so try to practice as much as possible, but also just try to memorize this as well. So we've got row call, that is your grid. And if you want to go up, you go row minus one and the column stays the same. If you want to go down, it's row plus one, column stays the same. You want to go to the left, column minus one, row stays the same. If you want to go to the right, row stays the same and the column goes up. So like if we go back here to our other slide, hello. So if you have like, for instance, the number 20, and you wanna to go to the right, well, it's in the same array, so you just go one value to the right. If you wanna to go to the left, you just go one value to the left. If you wanna to go to number nine here, it's actually in a different row, which means it's in the next array. So you go row plus one or to the next array, but the column or the position in that array stays the same. And it's the same thing if you wanna go from 20 to 10. The row, you go over to the next row or the previous row, uh, which is the previous array, and the position in the array stays the same. If you have to do diagonals, totally fine. Um, it's just, instead of just going, like for instance, if you're going up left, instead of just going column minus one, you're also doing row minus one. Um, and to the left here, if you ever need to transpose um, a 1D array to a 2D array, this is gonna help you. Um, row index, the row index will be the index divided by the number of columns. And the column index is going to be index mod the number of columns. And if you're transposing a 2D array into a 1D array, the index of that value is going to be row index times the number of columns plus index. And as I said, just practice it. And then you'll, you'll see why that is the case. Like you'll keep practicing and you're like, oh, this is so much easier if I just do this. And, but for a technical interview, just try to have it memorized. So you're not like doing it by hand. All right, so two-dimensional arrays. Um, I actually don't know how I am on time. So for the code directors, do you mind just letting me know if I go past time? Sorry. <laughs> just like give me a heads up in the chat. Sure. Um, so in many graph problems, you are trying to find something. So some examples are um, a specific value within the matrix, within a matrix or a tree. Um, we're not gonna go over trees right um, today, but trees are also graph problems, um, or sort of. Um, shortest path or shortest path on a map or shortest distance on a map, um, maybe a word in a word search. And there are two main strategies to solve this. We can do breadth, oh, I hate saying this, breadth first search, BFS, or depth first search. Um, there are other ways to do that that are more efficient, but for technical interviews, these two strategies are, are gold, like you're, you're fine. Okay, let's talk about breadth first search. So breadth first search, um, as the name suggests, it is super thorough, so it's going wide. And the way I think of this is, as you can see to the left, like Sound of Music, Julie Andrews, she's opening up her arms wide. And that is sort of a representation of breath first search. Um, it's super thorough. Um, you start, you go level by level. You start at one node 
and then you you search from there now like for instance I don't know if you remember like a few years back like people kept talking about like six degrees of separation like you're only six degrees of separation from someone in the world or six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon and how you figure that out is say you have only two friends in the whole wide world you're like hey friend number one do you know Kevin Bacon and then you go to friend number two, do you know Kevin Bacon? And they're like, I don't know, let me find, ask my two friends in the world. So friend number one goes to their only two friends in the world and they ask, do you know Kevin Bacon? And they're like, I don't know. And then they ask and so on. And that's really how it starts, right? Like this little pyramid, like you keep going to each neighbor and neighbor until you find that person who's like, hey, not only do I know Kevin Bacon, but I am Kevin Bacon. And that is the whole, how breath first search works. All right. Uh, here is a visualization, an illustration of how it works um, in a grid. So you have like your starting point and then it goes to its neighbors and then they go to their neighbors and it's sort of like a wave, right? Like it's, it's going out until finally you reach your target value. And the pseudocode for this is moving from start to end. So you, you use a queue. A queue is really the best way to do this. Um, you add the start node to the queue and while the queue has nodes then you dq i don't know if that's how you spell dq my bad <laughs> you dq and if the node has been visited or if a node is out of bounds or if a node is is your target value then you return otherwise you visit the node and then you add each neighbor to the queue and i'm going to go ahead and illustrate how that works so let's go here Okay, do you see this? Okay, I'm assuming you do. Cool, I see Michi's thumbs up, awesome. Both thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so um, in this problem that we're gonna illustrate here, we're going to travel from nine to one, or not even travel from nine to one. Basically nine is asking, do I have a path from to one, right? So remembering our, um, remembering our, whoops, my, my thing's going crazy. Remembering our pseudocode, our algorithm, we're going to have a queue. So put a queue. We're also gonna remember our visited. Um, and let's have a node. Okay, cool. So remembering our algorithm here, we're going to add nine to the queue. And while queue has nodes and queue does have nodes or items, we're going to DQ nine. Um, I have this here just to remember, I go up, right, down, left. I don't think it matters which direction you go in terms of neighbors, adding your neighbors. Someone said it matters. I don't think it does, but I go up, right, down, left. Um, so we DQ'd the queue. And now nine is our node. And so is nine out of bounds? No. Is nine visited? No. Is nine our target destination? No. Okay, so let's go ahead and visit it. So we cross that out. And we then we add its neighbors. So up, there's nothing to above. Right, okay, we've got eight. Down, we have six. And left, we have nothing. Okay, we're done. So now get nine, ooh, dang, okay. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to DQ and eight is our node. Is eight out of bounds? Nope. Is eight visited? Nope. Is eight our target destination? Nope. All right, let's go ahead and visit it. Pow. And let's add its neighbors up, oh, nothing. Right, seven. Down, five. Left is nine, but nine is visited, so we're not gonna add it. And then, um, and then we're done. All right, let's DQ. Six, is it out of bounds? No. Is it visited? No. Is it our target value? No. All right, let's go ahead and visit it. So we add it here. Um, let's add its neighbors. Up is nine, but it's visited, so we're not gonna add it. Right is five. Down is three. And left is nothing, so we are good. And let's continue. DQ, seven. Is seven visited? No. Is it out of bounds? No. Is it our target destination? No. All right, let's go ahead and visit it. Pow. And let's add its neighbors. Up, nothing, right, nothing, down, four. 
left is eight, but it's visited. So let's continue. All right, DQ, five. Five, is it visited? Nope, is it out of bounds? Nope, is it our target value? Nope, all right, let's visit it. Five, um, let's add its neighbors. Up is visited, right is four, down is two, and left is six, but it's visited, so we're not gonna add it. All right, cool, we're done. All right, let's DQ. Five, is five out of bounds? Nope, is it visited? Yes, it is, get out of here. DQ, three, is three visited? No, is it out of bounds? No, is it our target destination? No, okay, let's go ahead and visit it and add its neighbors. Up is visited, we're not adding it. Right is not visited, let's add it. Down is nothing and left is nothing. Okay, cool, we're done. All right, DQ, four, is it visited? Nope, is it out of bounds? Nope. Is it our target value? Nope. All right, let's visit it. Um, and now let's add its neighbors. Up is seven, it's already visited. We're not gonna add it. Right, nothing. Down, one. Left is visited, we're not gonna add it. Okay, cool. All right, DQ. Four, is four visited? Yes, get out of here. DQ. Two, is it visited? No, is it out of bounds? No, let's go ahead and visit it and add its neighbors. Up, visited, don't add it. Right, one, because it's not visited. Down, nothing. Left is visited, we don't add it. All right, we're, we're done here. All right, let's DQ. Wait, let's DQ. Two, is it out of bounds? No, is it visited? Yes, get out of here. DQ, one, is it out of bounds? No, is it visited? No, is it our target destination? Yes, oh my gosh. Hey, what do you know? So now we return this node or whatever you do for your breath, breath first search, you return it, and we know that we have a path from nine to one. Now, as you can see, <laughs> in the area, the way that we traverse this grid, it, it's super like inefficient, right? Because we went all these other places before we went to our path. Um, and that's why it's efficient for finding things like the shortest path on a map. Um, and it's just very thorough, and that's just how it is. But um, we're going to find, I wouldn't say another, a more efficient way, but we're going to find, or we're going to go over a different way, um, which is depth for search. All right, depth for search. Let's see. Pew, pew, pew. So I know. Oh, so Maria asked, what does it mean out of bounds? Um, so let me actually go. Okay. <laughs> so visually, I, I gave you no choice to go out of bounds. Um, however, you know what, let me actually go, let me go back to this iPad real quick. Okay. Hello. Oh, there we go. So vis visually, I didn't really give you an opportunity to see what out of bounds looks like, but remember I have up, right, down, left. Well, sometimes up is going to be right here and right or in left is going to be right here and your your algorithm's not really going to distinguish between what is like out of bounds yet until you but you can set checks to determine if it's out of bounds so if you're if you're doing for instance left and it's column minus one and you're at negative one then your algorithm checks hey is is your column less than zero if so just return like don't even try to access that value because it's going to be outside of the bounds of the array so that's what i mean by out of bounds is like are you outside of the bounds of your array cool awesome um let's go back to depth first search so depth first search as the name suggests this method goes deep not wide. So got this little this little snake here. Just think of a snake. It goes as far as it can. It slithers down as far as it can um, until it can't anymore. Until it reaches a, a wall, uh, a place where it cannot go further, like out of bounds or something like that, or visited, or it reaches the destination. And this is kind of an well, it is an illustration, not kind of. This this is an illustration of what it looks like. So as you can see, as you're going from start to end or yeah, your, your start to end, essentially, um, 
you are traveling down each path as far as it can go until you hit a block and then you you try it again and you just keep trying until one of the the, the viable paths works and reaches your target destination or it reaches nothing at all um all right so here is the pseudocode for um dfs now you can use a recursion or you can use a stack personally i like to use recursion um but a stack works as well so what you're going to do is you're going to move from start to end and you're going to start at start and for each neighbor, like neighbor start, you're going to first, first see if it's if it's visited or out of bounds, just return. But otherwise, visit the node and then do DFS, right? Because it's recursion, it's doing over and over again. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go through an illustration of or a demonstration of how it works. All right, so back here. We're gonna go here, DFS. All right, so we're traveling from A to P. And the question is, A asks is, do I have a path to P? Um, so as the, the, the algorithm works, first you go to all of its neighbors and its neighbors are uh, B and H. So let's start with B. Um, <laughs> now I said I didn't do a stack, but I use recursion, but for visualization, I'm just gonna use a stack. Um, all right, so we're gonna visit A, and then let's see, add A to the stack, and we ask, oh, visit. We ask B, or up is nowhere. Um, then we ask B, hey, do you have a path to B? B's like, I don't know, but let's go ahead and just visit you and then add you to the stack. Up is nothing, right is C, and we ask C, hey, do you have a path to P? C's like, I don't know. So we visit C, we add it to the stack, and we go ask D, hey, D, do you have a path to, oh, up is nothing, right is D. Hey, D, do you have a path to P? I don't know. So we're going to visit you, add you to the stack. Up is nothing, right is E. Hey, E, do you have a path to P? I don't know. We're gonna visit you, add you to the stack. Hey, F, oh, up is nothing, right is nothing down is f hey do you have a path to p i do not know wait we do know <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna ask so f says i don't know so f goes up well e is already visited so we can't go there right is nothing down is nothing left is nothing so f actually knows f's like yeah i don't have a path to p no so we go back down oh my goodness <laughs> Whatever, you know it's E. <laughs> so now we go to E. E's like, all right, so we know that up is nothing, right is nothing, down said no, left is visited, so no, I do not have a path to P. So remove that a little bit. All right, D, D, up is nothing, right said no, down is nothing, C is visited, I do not have a path to P. So, boop, boop, boop. all right, C says up is nothing, right said no, down is G, let's go ahead and visit G and add it to the stack. Hey G, do you have a path to B? Well, up is visited, right is nothing, down is nothing, left is nothing. No, I do not have a path to B. So we remove G. C says, well, up is nothing, right is nothing, or right said no, G said no, and left is visited. So no, I do not have a path to P. Go back to B. Up is nothing, right said no, down is nothing, A left is visited, so no, I do not have a path to P. Now we go back to A. Well, we knew that up is nothing, right said no, down, however, uh, is not visited, so we're going to go ahead and visit it, and oh, I went backwards, but whatever, um, add it to the stack. Hey, I, do you have a path to P? I don't know. I'm, all right, let's visit you. Add you to stack, um, up is visited, right is nothing, down is J. Hey, J, do you have a path to P? I don't know. K, do you have a path to P? I don't know. Obviously going up, right, down, we're, we're just going down. Um, maybe I should do this the proper way. <laughs> K says up is, up is visited, right is L. Hey, do you have a path to P? I don't know, let's visit you, add you to stack, M. Oh, up is nothing, right is M. Let's go ahead and ask M, do you have a path to P? I don't know. All right, let's ask you, add you to the stack. 
Up is N. Do you have a path to B? I don't know. All right, let's go visit you. Up is nothing. Right is O. Hey, do you have a path to P? I'm not sure. All right, let's add you to the stack. Woo! I'm getting kind of crowded over here. Um, all right, so up is nothing. Right is P. So we add, we ask P, do you have a path to P? And P's like, yo, I am P. So we go back here all the way down here. <laughs> I swear to, this is, imagine recursion doing this. <laughs> and then it says yes, P says yes to O, O says yes to N, N says yes to M, M says yes to L, L says yes to K, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's returning true <laughs> until you go back to A and A is like, yes, I do have a path to P. And that is the pseudocode, the demonstrated pseudocode of how this works. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to practice this. <laughs> so a couple of things. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Um, we, so I forgot to add, not I forgot, but I just realized that it would have been much easier if I added the pseudocodes to your whiteboards, and that's fine. Um, what we're going to do is this. If you need help going back to, um, implementing your code and you want to use um, breath first search or depth first search and you need help with the, um, with the pseudocode, just come back here to this, this room and we'll show you this pseudocode and just like, you know, take notes and then go back to your group. Um, okay, cool. So we're gonna go ahead and break up into groups um, so you all can practice. Now, a couple of things. I recommend one person acting as the driver um, so that person will, you know, open their Replit account and start a, start a Replit and um, choose their language, et cetera, and you be the primary person coding. Um, and then the rest of you instruct the, um, the driver on what to do, like what moves to make. Um, and so, and you can also share your Replit as well. I don't know if you can see this. Can you, can you see me like going to Replit? Okay, cool. Look at that little kitty. Okay, so to do this, you choose your language. I work mostly in Python. And when you're sharing with a group, there's a little share in the upper right corner and just drop it in the chat so people can type if they can. However, I recommend one person being uh, the driver. Um, we also have down here a bit.ly and that, these are gonna be your like whiteboards and they say the problem um, as well as a step-by-step of PyRecMit, the algorithm design template. So like problem inputs, whatever, so you don't have to remember from scratch. All right, um, let's go over the problem. Number of islands. This is like classic grid problem. Like maybe you've seen this, likely you've seen this, but um, doesn't matter. We're just here to implement BFS or DFS. I don't know, which one do you choose? So. Number of islands, given a map of ones and zeros, count the number of islands. So ones represent land and zeros represent water. So, let me close that door. Um, so for instance, you have an, um, an array of arrays as your input. Um, if you look at the first one, all of the ones are actually connected. So that's one island. So your algorithm should return one. Um, if you look at the second example, you've got a group, a little cluster of ones over here. You've got one, one in the, in the middle, and then two ones, um, and that's three. So it should return three as number of islands. Um, islands are only, are surrounded by water and formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. That means you do not have to worry about diagonals. Um, all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. Any questions before you tackle this? Any clarification questions, anything like that? How is the second anyone? example has three island? Can you explain? Yeah. yeah, so you see this cluster of ones, the, um, the two ones at the top of the two ones at the bottom in the upper left-hand corner. So that's one island. And the one, the one in the middle, that's another island. And then the bottom two, the bottom left 
right corner, that's the third island. Do you do you see? Would you like would you like me to and demonstrate? Why the first one only one then? Why the first row of yeah. the first example so, is not Yeah. Island? So even though they're all over the place, they're actually connected. So that it's a little bit off because that like left bracket is kind of pushing over. I try to line them up, but the one, 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 the last one is connected to the bottom one because it's, 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 it's above neighbor. So they're all, they are all connected horizontally or vertically. So it's just a big island. Do you, would you like me to demonstrate further? Um, Maybe so it'd be helpful me, to, like, to draw circles around each island real quick. Yeah, I yeah. am going to do that. Uh, I am currently figuring out in my head a way to do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see. All right, so let's see. I am going to... So one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. So this island starts here, goes here. I don't know if it's just me, down but I here. can't see. Oh, you can't? Oh, my bad. Can you oh, there it goes. There. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. Sorry. Oops. Okay. Oops. Don't apologize. <laughs> All right. So we start here. This island starts here. And it comes over. Oops. I'm okay. Whatever. And then it comes down here. Oop. Oop. That is one island. Because each each one here is connected either horizontally or vertically. Let's see. How, how about now, Bay? How, how you feeling? Thumbs yeah, up? It's good, yes. Would you like me to go over the second example or are we- Can I see the second example? Yeah. Maybe I can. Okay, I'm gonna lose you for a moment as I uh, draw these down. Just bear with me. Um, one, oops. One, one, zero, zero, zero. One, one, zero, zero. One, one, zero, 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 zero. Sorry. Okay, that's not really helping you. And let me start that over. Okay. One, one, zero, 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 comma. One, one, zero, zero, zero. Zero zero one zero zero and then zero 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 one comma one. Okay, cool. Let me let me go back now. All right, do you see my 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 buddy here? My mm -hmm. my whiteboard? Okay, cool. So this cluster of ones right here, that is an island. Then you've got this person in the middle here. Or, yeah, person. Uh, that is another island. And then over here, you've got these two right here, another island. So this should, your algorithm should return three. Okay. All right. So any, any other questions, clarification questions from anyone? You can drop Thank them in the chat or you can, oh yeah, for sure. Um, you can drop them in the chat or you can unmute. Um, but I am going to go back. Oops, no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the bit.ly to find the whiteboards is bit.ly slash www.csd dash big O2. Um, it is case sensitive. There's no cases, but you know, it is case sensitive. Um, and what it will do is when you go there, I'm actually going to show you right now. So if you go to bit.ly slash sd dash big O2, Two, it's going to take you to these whiteboards. We're going to break you up into different groups. Like if you're in group number 16, um, open that one. And that's going to be where you can see the problem. 
and uh, the Pyref commit here. So just go to that bit.ly. I'm actually going to go back, and that's how you get there. All right. Let's uh, let's break it up into different rooms. Remember, choose a driver. The driver, it's just the most, I find it's the most useful way to do it. The driver is going to um, start coding and um, and get you going. Okay. Oh, no, is it this? Yeah, okay. All right, so are, are we back with recording? Yep, just turned it back on. Okay, cool. I know you just explained this to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, question. Uh, so, for the last, uh, the last part of this, uh, the series, where was that recording link? Is it in the women who oh. in the page or about that? <laughs> we actually forgot to record the last session. Okay. So it doesn't exist. <laughs> However, <laughs> we will do it again at some point, um, and we will record that one, but. Um, for now, we just have the slides. Okay, okay, totally fine. Yeah. I was just wondering because you guys kept saying that the last session was recorded and I was looking and I did not find it. <coughs> oh, no, okay. it wasn't recorded. No worries, no worries, thank you. <coughs> Sorry, I was eating dishwashers. Okay, good thing this one's recorded. Um, all right, <laughs> let's go over. Let's go over. Did anyone have a solution that they were able to implement? <clears throat> you can you can drop in the chat. Um, the problems for the last session we will share. Okay, you fail, but you learn. Hey, failing is learning. Failing is a part of learning. I fail all the time, and you know what? I just I just embrace it. <laughs> All right, anyone? No, no? Did anyone choose? Okay, did anyone choose a method for um, going through the um, islands? I'd like to, I, I wanna see what you, <clears throat> yeah. DFS, okay. We chose DFS, yeah, we chose DFS. <clears throat> awesome. So here's the thing, both of them work. <laughs> and I didn't say this in the lecture, but each, each method will find you a path or like we'll find a path, right? One is more direct, like depth first search is more direct and breath first search is a lot wider, uh, but you will get there. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, tell you what the algorithm is. And then I'm gonna live code it, woo. <laughs> All right, so solution, DFS or BFS, both are right. They're both, they're both gonna be there. Also both have O, M and runtime. Um, you're not going to be able to really get do better than that because to find it, you're you know worst case scenario, you're going to have to iterate through all of the all of the rows and all of the columns. So it's going to either is fine. So the algorithm is do a linear scan of a 2D node. So go through all the rows, iterate through all the rows, iterate through all the columns. And if you find a one, do BFS on it or DFS, whichever one you choose. And then <clears throat> remember how we had in our, um, our like walkthrough of the algorithms, how you denote whether something is visited. Um, the way that you can do it here is to just mark visited nodes as zero so you don't double count it. And each time you trigger a, um, like a BFS or DFS search, just increase the count and then return that count. <clears throat> Let me just repeat it because I don't know if that made sense. So iterate through all the rows, iterate through all the columns, and then if you see a one, do BFS to see how big or how far that island goes. As you do DFS or BFS, change them to zero so that you don't double count, and then keep going and iterating. And each time as it triggers the BFS or DFS, then you increase the count, and that gives you the number of islands. All right, here we go. Oh, I don't like light coding, but here we go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I'm kind of cheating because I did this last night, but I'm gonna start from scratch. All right, so 
let's see. We have 20 minutes. I'm going to go through BF. Well, first of all, can you see this? I'm going to look. Can you, yes. can you see this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Wait, I'm going to full screen. Can you still, can you still see it? Thumbs up. Thumbs, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So <clears throat> BFS is definitely the harder one because DFS is just recursion. You know, I'll just start with DFS. If there's time, I'll do BFS. Okay, cool. So DFS, did I do a stack? I'm trying to remember. I just did this. Oh, I did a stack? Really? Why? Okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to do a stack. I'm going to do recursion. Okay, so first I'm going to get the test things here. Um, we're assuming here that I did the PyREC MIT, like I went through all the problems, problem, blah, 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 and now we're just pseudocoding. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm doing Python, by the way. Um, you can do whatever one that you want, but this is the um, easiest for me. Um, okay, so get islands, and then you have your grid, and then you say some stuff here. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so let's pseudocode this first. So what we wanna do, as we said in the pseudocode, is we wanna iterate through the rows, we want to iterate through the columns. And we if a one is found, we do DFS. And then we return. Oh, we actually want to increase the count, right? Um, and then return the count, right? Okay, cool. So let's code this out. So maintenance variables, um, we have count. So we want to have like islands equals zero. Um, I like having like max row and max column when I'm doing grid stuff because it's just helpful. So max row is, as we remember, um, the length of the grid itself. And the max column is going to be the length of the first array within the grid. Okay, so iterate through the rows. So row equals zero, while row is less than max row, do some stuff and then row plus equal one. Okay, cool. Now iterate through the columns. Call equals zero, while call is less than max call. Do some stuff and then call plus equal one. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so we iterated through the rows, we're iterating through the columns. If a one is found, increase DFS. Okay, so what? Increase count. <laughs> oh my gosh. And DFS. Okay, if a grid, if a one is found, okay, so we do grid, row, whoops, call. So if that is one, then do DFS, I'm actually going to put do DFS, we'll increase count, and do DFS. So islands plus equal one, and then do DFS. I like to use recursion, I'm not going to do a stack, I'm just not doing it. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to actually do a helper function here um, because DFS is, or recursion is great like that. So I'm going to do DFS search, and we're going to search the grid. Um, we want to know where the coordinates are. So I'm going to do, we're going to pass the grid itself because you need to know what you're searching through. But you're also going to pass the row and the column. So call. Okay, you do some stuff here. A good person will put things there. I'm not a good person. Okay, um, I like to keep max row and max call whenever I'm doing any sort of grid stuff. So do that. Okay, so what is the DFS algorithm? So we, if it is, if it is visited or out of bounds or, if it's visited or out of bounds or, the destination, I think. I, I actually don't remember. <laughs> Return. <laughs> Otherwise, do DFS on neighbors. Okay, watch this like doesn't work. Okay, if, <laughs> if visited or out of bounds, if, what visited? If grid row call, well, first let's check if it's like out of bounds because we don't want to break our code. So if, 
Okay, so row, if row, okay, here we go. If row is less than zero, right? Because this, we're checking if it's out of bounds because we don't want to, we don't want to be out of bounds in our array. So if row is less than zero, um, or row is greater than or equal to max row, or if the call is less than zero, the column, or ca call is greater than or equal to max call, <clears throat> then we want to return. Um, what else? If it's visited, we also want to return. If, oh, there is no destination, so we actually don't need to do that. So just do, because we're not looking for a target value. We're just trying to change all the ones to zero. Um, let's see, elif, it's visited. So grid row call is zero, then return. Okay, if not, then let's just do DFS on its neighbors. So uh, do DFS on above neighbor, do DFS on up right, on right neighbor, do DFS on below neighbor, and then do DFS on left neighbor. Okay. <clears throat> so above, what is above? Well, that is, remember, row minus one, and you stay in the same column. So, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to put row minus one comma call. Right neighbor, you stay in the same row, but you go over one to the right. So row stays the same, call plus one. Um, Below neighbor, I, oh, yeah. Um, I, I did not quite get that if condition there. Can you go over through it? Yeah, sure. Thank so <clears throat> remember in our um, pseudocode, if it's out of bounds or if it's visited, we, we return, right? If it's out of bounds, we don't want to perform because it's out of the scope of the array. So what does that mean when it's out of bounds? I just said it's out of the scope of the array, right? Like that means it's negative one or it's or it's out like it's greater than the the or equal to the length of the array. So that's what we're doing right here. We're seeing here if it's out of bounds. So if the row is less than zero, which is negative that means ones. Yeah. exactly then that's that's out of bounds and we need to return it if the row is greater or equal to the max row and right here max row is the length of the grid that's how many you know rows there are if it's outside of that then we need to return it because we, we it's out of bounds same thing with the column if the column is less than zero or if it's less than the max call which is the um the length of the first array in the grid, then it's out of bounds and we need to return it. <clears throat> so that's okay. what we're doing, right? Like we're checking to see if it's out of bounds. Okay. We're also checking to see if it's visited because we don't wanna, with the thing with like recursion is like, you need to have like a base case, right? But like if we keep going over the same, um, the same things, like if we keep revisiting the same nodes over and over and over and over, we're, like the stack's gonna blow up and our code's gonna blow up and every, every everyone's just dying. <laughs> so yeah. what we what we do is um what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark visited. And the way that we're marketing it, the easiest way to do it is um just to change the grid itself. Now if you are if you are doing like an algorithm where you're actually where you where you can't change the data itself, I don't recommend doing that. You can you can carry like a list or like a linked list or not linked list, um, array list or something, carry it with you to, so, so you can keep track of how the nodes that are visited. But for this, this um, algorithm, we're just gonna change it to zero. And that way we know that it's visited. Um, so, <clears throat> and in the original um, code that calls DFS search, we're only triggering it when we approach a one. So here we are just changing any, connected pieces um, in an island, we're just changing it to zero because it's part of the original island. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it did. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. It, it was a lot of words. I'm hoping, 
some of that explained your answer to your question. Thank you. Okay, (laughs) awesome. (laughs) Okay, so if it's visited or out of bounds, or if it's visit, if it's out of bounds, this is our first check, then return. If it's visited or it's like zero, then return. Otherwise, we're going to do DFS on our neighbors. So we're going to do DFS search um, grid row minus one call. So that's our above neighbor. DFS search grid uh, row call plus one. DFS search grid. Yeah, what's up? I think uh, don't you have to say grid row call equal equal to uh, equal to zero that you have to assign if you don't return. Uh, where where are you talking about this one here? Yeah, before the two returns, there should be like you have to assign that that column like that cell the zero because you're triggering recursion. I have to assign what to like, zero? I'm you sorry. Say you, you say when you find the, the one, you're going to change it to zero, right? Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. I was about to ask why we had the grid yeah. of call equals to equals to zero. How, how is it visited? Okay. Look at you all. You're paying attention. Yes, we need to mark it as visited. You're absolutely correct. So yes. uh, when, uh, when we say that it's uh, visited, you're going to say it by marking it as zero. Yes. So yeah. if it's if it's if grid row call equals zero return, but then you mark it as zero. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much, Bay. <laughs> I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> it was a yes. test. Anyway, <laughs> so um, let's see, we're going below. Oh, I didn't mark it down here. Um, below is row plus one call. And then left is a row call minus one. I just like to do it in the pseudo. I mean, it's best if you do it in the pseudo code, but okay. This is above to the right below row plus one call. And then DFS search grid um, row call minus one. Okay, cool. So let's go back to our original uh, thing here. So we iterate through the row, we iterate through the columns. If one is found, increase the count and then do DFS. So we do DFS search um, on, we pass the grid, we pass the row, and then we pass the column. And we increase, uh, I like that space there. Okay, I'm going to keep the pseudocode here just in case like I forgot something else and it's like totally going to break. Um, okay, so remember from our first test, our expected output is one. Um, and then for our second test, our expected output is two. All right, pray for me. <laughs> no! Oh, did I return? I didn't return. This is always my <laughs> downfall. Oh my God. Return islands. Let's try it again. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> so it matches the, um, our return matches the expected output. Um, and then that's how you know that your algorithm works and you can continue on with your life. Um, gosh, should I do VFS? VFS is kind of a dumpster fire because there's just so much more. You know what? Do it as a mental exercise at home. We're already at like time. <laughs> So if you want to do BFS, do it at home. I can also post it. Um, I did. Okay, so let me actually go. Um, go back to. I mean, both work. I just BFS is just a lot. Um, so this is the Java way to do it. I didn't post Python, but I did do it in Python. Um, I can update these slides to reflect the code that I did for Python. Um, but you know what? We have a couple of minutes. I'll just show you what I did here. So as I said um, before, for depth first search, use recursion. For breadth first search, you want to use a queue. And I'm just going to walk through what I did for the code. So have a queue. 
remember how to make your data structures first of all just it's it's annoying but like memorize how to make your data structures um kind of like i did here right you iterate through the rows you iterate through the columns um if you find a one then start your queue add the first node to the queue and then while it has items dequeue it and then if okay so this is getting kind of like bonkers over here the thing with doing it here is that you need to keep track of the coordinates um, because that helps you determine like where the rows are and whatnot i'll post it and you can work through it um, and i also have the pseudocode here but you add all the neighbors and and add them to the queue only add ones that are one or have not been visited that's what this is basically saying here right like or make sure they're not out of bounds and make sure that they're one, like don't add zeros because then you're never gonna get out of that while loop. Um, and then, and then yeah, return count. <laughs> Always remember your return data, data variables. All right, so that is it. <laughs> I'm gonna go back here. Do I have anything? I think I have resources back here to help you understand um, how to solve these. Leak code, right? Like leak code is really the best way to do it. And with that, I am going to turn it over to the co-directors to wrap us up. <laughs> hey, uh, Michi, do you want to close us out? Sure. Uh, well, first yeah. of all, thank you so much for to Kat um, for leading another Yay. amazing, fantastic um, interview prep lecture. So. Um, if this is your first one, um, I hope you'll see you back again. I know there are definitely some people that have been here in the past and and come back because Kat does such a great job. Um, so we Kat does these um, uh, twice a month. So there's one that's a lecture like this time, and then the other one that's going to be in two weeks ish um, is going to be uh, a a practice uh, session where you it's more focused on that like those you you. There's two different problems. We break out into groups. You get to work on them together. Um, so if you enjoyed that second part of this event, definitely join us for the, the next practice event because there's more of that and, and just more practice, which is always good. Um, and our next event that we have for Women Who Code San Diego that's coming up is our third birthday celebration. So we're really excited about that. That's going to be on Thursday, October 15th at 6 p.m. Um, on Zoom. It's going to be remote just like everything else is. Um, so we're gonna have April Wenzel, who's the, um, she is the CEO and founder of um, Compassionate Coding. She's gonna give a great talk. We're gonna do some uh, fun speed networking. We're gonna have a raffle. It's gonna be a fun night. Um, definitely join us for that. Um, and then on October 21st, there's gonna be the Angular meetup that Julie, who's also here, she helps lead that um, and I help out a little. Um, so that's, that's gonna be on Wednesday, October 21st at 6 p.m. Um, and somewhere in between that, we'll have our other interview prep, I think. Right, Kat? Okay, cool. Kat's giving me a thumbs up. Um, the best way to follow us is on Meetup. So if you're not already following us on Meetup, um, please make sure that you join us there. Uh, we also have a Slack channel, so you can join Slack. Um, and that's a great way to keep in touch with everyone that you met tonight. Um, and we're on social media at WW Code San Diego um, on pretty much all the social media platforms. Um, and Jillian just posted in the chat the, the way to sign up for Slack for our newsletter, um, the email if you wanna to talk to the directors, if you wanna get involved in any way, please reach out to us, let us know. Um, we'd love to, to have more people involved. Um, did I miss anything? Nope, got it all. All right, great. Uh, and that then just thank you everyone who came out. Um, we really appreciate thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming. Yeah, we're gonna you all. <laughs> uh, nice have a to great see you all. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Yeah. Bye bye.